We come here for learn more about what happened in a Coral Garden incident, don't it? That's the purpose. Now, the other purpose is that we want the perspective of other people who is within the system. Because we don't want to make it look like when we are talk about what go on, it just looks like a Rasta talk. We want to hear some people who Babylon would say are for them people. But we know it's our people them too, because they understand the truth. And we have some special guests where we invite. Because you, as we say, we love plain clothes Rasta. We respect plain clothes Rasta who shine Rasta far right, broad, all over the earth. And you see when they do them work, we have to honor them. See? So you know it's Rasta far right works we are dealing with. Now, I and I invite a brother who is from the university. And I really want to take the opportunity now to ask, because I see my brother will come tell about Barry Shevans, who know more about Barry Shevans, because I'm on him work over the years today. And this brother does leave here, and you know, so this is I via Gialco introduction to brother Barry Shevans because this brother I know is part of the intellectual war we're going to use from Babylon for trample them because we are use all skills of offensive authority for trample Babylon you know we are use the university we are use the wisdom we are use divine liberty we are use everything to trample Babylon you know that so it's not just your locks going to use going to use all the levels that destroy Babylon well, I'm going to ask I Vive to introduce Barry Shevans, who is distinguished. And I want you to know, say, he's Dr. Barry Shevans. I want you to know that. And this brother has been making valuable contribution in the Rasta movement. So put your hands together and welcome I Vive, who will give you another introduction divinely. Yes, I. Mobia people, we give thanks. Brethren and sisters from all over. Nice to see the gathering coming out to uh, hear what took place in 1963 and to share in the griefs and the sorrow and even in the rejoicing of Rastafari standing here today freely the herb is burning and the fire key light and the hearts are in one we could give thanks unto the almighty idea because when you get ready spiritual wickedness in high and low places we have to move and it is fitting this night that Easter G and the unity of the brethren and sisters in Montego Bay really bring on this function and to invite the brother who is the next speaker or the first of the speakers to address i and i in this capacity for the night reasoning this brother is the dean of faculty of the university of the west indies and when you have a man within his caliber finding time taking time out for journey all the way from Kingston to Montego Bay to be in the presence of Rastafari sons and daughters. We can only show our appreciation, love, Sean, Faye, Dr. Barry Shevan. Look, put your hands together for him. Whenever we have our functions to declare truth and rights and justice, in the island and we call upon this brethren dr barry shevans to come and to address and to enlighten our people because sometimes the rasta man talk but it's when rasta talk a ganja talk and a mad talk so sometimes we have to go in at the deck and draw a man who look like them to come and to come speak and when the man come and come with the same talk with rasta talk May I tell you, it left people kind of puzzled and perplexed in their mind. When the mirror say an intellectual giant is compatible with allergies and the concepts of Rastafari. These brethren, and when we said these brethren, Dr. Chevans and a few more intellectuals who is at the University of the West Indies, Rupert Lewis, the name just one. These brothers are instrumental in shaping the young minds attending the university who has, who has been poisoned against their own blackness. Don't want to hear nothing black. These brethren are create the turnaround by educating the youths at the university about them own African self. Instilling race pride, race dignity, and race consciousness in the minds of today's youths. We have to salute brethren again, like Dr. Barry Shevans. This concept will rise up right yes sir. So it's the only indigenous thing Jamaica possess. So we are telling them to treat it with respect. 
and Dr. Barry Shevans when the man uh, expound upon Rastafari and the old Afrocentric vibrations that brought forth Rastafari and a revolutionary movement like the Maroons and Kojo and Nani and all them liberation fighters, the up to Rastafari, Marcus Garvey come through the same liberation movement. So we have to give thanks to Bridget like this because anywhere we call him, even in the deepest ghetto, we can look to see Dr. Barry Shevans taking time out to be here. So man, think of here, Chilani, Westmoreland, Hanover, America, Canada, Miami, Germany, Switzerland. We can put our hands together for Dr. Barry Shevans, Dean of Faculty of the University of the West Indies, Rastafari. Yes, man, blessings and our majesty. May I tell you, man, a freedom fighter extra hard in here. But him are going to need the strength. But him knows that any time them give him a fight in the system, a one place him know him can find shelter. Within the fraternity of Rastafari. Elders and patriarchs, elders and matriarchs, I and I, Nyabingi, Rastafari of all different mansions, Rastafari from abroad, I thought I saw my friend Ras Eichel from Barbados, but I must have been mistaken. He is here. Big up Eichel. I sincerely wish to thank the brethren and the sistren of Montego Bay through Russ Junior Manning to invite me and my wife to this very historic and important celebration. I don't want to go in to tell you why I came. Because it's very difficult to see how I could not have come. But I want to say a few words to you about the significance of this event. When I my wife and I were standing in the crowd. She leaned over to me and she told me how she was struck by the number of young Rastafari. She did not know that only a few days ago, at the fourth conference of the Rastafari Central Centralization Organization, I made exactly the same words. That I too was impressed with so many young Rastafari present. So that people who were wondering what happened to Rasta? Rasta rise again. But I want to say, what is the significance and the importance of having young black people, young Africans, young Jamaicans becoming conscious of Rastafari. Rastafari is to the Jamaican people what the memory is to an individual. Every individual has a memory. 
It is through your memory that you retain a sense of who you are. Without a memory, you are nothing. You do not know who you are. If anybody asks you, who are you? You do not know. Because without a memory, you do not know where you come from. You do not know who your relatives are, who your mother is, who your friends are, where you were born, where you grew up. Without a memory, you are nobody. People who have Alzheimer's disease are those people who have lost their memory. They live only in the present. They do not know who they are. They do not know who they come from. They cannot recognize their friends. They cannot recognize their enemies. They know nothing. Rastafari is the memory of the Jamaican people. It is the Rastafari movement. In this period of the turn of the century, when we are moving from one into another, Nothing is really going to change, you know. You're going to be the same on the 1st of January as you were on the 31st of December. It's just a day older. But it's a significant and important moment to remember who you are. Because without that, you won't even know who you could be and who you can be. And it is Rastafari which has testified to who we are. And it is this, because of this testimony, because the Rastafari were prepared to stand up, to say who we are, not only themselves, The people, those who perpetuated, who perpetrated the atrocities against the Rastafari were people who did not know themselves. They did not know who they are. When I heard Brother Enos speak and tell of all the agonies that he went through, not because he committed any wrong, but simply because he testified to being a Rastafari. His only crime was to be the memory, the memory of the Jamaican people. We are a people against whom some of the most terrible atrocities were perpetrated. No other people came to these islands but know where they came from. We, the Africans, underwent a systematic obliteration of where we come from. They even took away our name. Every Indian who came to this, these islands came with a name so that they can trace where they came from. Every Chinese citizen that adopted this land as their home know by their name where they came from, and many of them returned to visit their relatives. A systematic attempt was made to obliterate the memory of Africa, the memory 
of where we came from. We were systematically given other names. The names of those who enslaved us. And most of us carry the names of Europeans. It is to the strength and the witness of Rastafari, which has tried and stood up for memory, where Babylon and the oppressors erased memory, tried to obliterate memory, Rastafari stood up for memory. Memory is that faculty through which you retain a sense of who you are. Many of us, perhaps most of us, my brothers and sisters, do not know ourselves. We were not made to know ourselves. I have students at the university who, when you say to them, we are an African people, you know, they say, Af after me, non African. Right? I am Jamaican. And they do not understand the very simple fact that there is no contradiction. You may be a Jamaican. You carry a Jamaican passport. Your citizenship is Jamaican. But you are an African. Every Ghanaian is a Ghanaian. But he's also an African. There's no contradiction. So why should there be a contradiction? And we all go through this terrible conflict of trying to deny who we are. There is something, what is wrong with Africa? Why, why is there such a big problem with Africa? It is because we have undergone systematic obliteration of memory of who we are. Rastafari has stood for the restoration of memory, for the upholding of a sense of identity. When in 1962, following the acquisition of independent status, our political leaders decided that since we want to forge an identity as Jamaican, let us forget about emancipation and let us instead celebrate independence. And as a result, from 19 162 until two years ago an entire generation of our children grew up not knowing not remembering who they were because emancipation day which was to recall that the culmination of that immense struggle of our people to liberate themselves <coughs> from slavery was obliterated. Pardon me. <coughs> it looked like some spirits don't want me to talk. <coughs> No spirit strong enough to stop me from saying what I want to say. When <clears throat> they obliterated the memory of emancipation 
from the minds of a generation of our children. There's only one organization that carried the fight relentlessly for the restoration of emancipation, and that was the Rastafari. Rastafari included Emancipation Day in its calendar of events. Every 1st of August was a Naya Bingi. Rastafari never allowed our people to forget that the 1st of August was a day when all of our people, Rasta, non-Rasta, Ballad, everybody was free. We threw off the shackles of slavery. No more slave. Rastafari is the memory of the Jamaican people. <clears throat> The Honorable Marcus Mosiah Garvey lived and he died. And his life's work was built on the memory of Africa. After he departed these shores and after his spirit moved on, Rastafari became the memory of the Jamaican people. Because Rastafari was the only movement, only movement that reminded us where we came from. <clears throat> this, my brothers and sisters, is a secret of what took place at Coral Gardens. It was perpetrated by people who were afraid to face up to the fact of who we are. They wanted to deny who we are. They wanted to hide who we are from the people. And Rastafari became that force. And therefore, I am very glad to be here. And I'm joining you in affirming memory. I say, and I have said only because Someone greater has said, a people who forget their past cannot know who they are. They cannot know themselves in the present and therefore they can't know where they're supposed to go. They don't know where they're going. I therefore commend you for this great effort. I am truly impressed with this gathering. When Brother Junior Manning said they were having this commemoration, if I would come, I said yes. But I thought this was going to be a little gathering of a bingi in a park with a few other brethren from Montego Bay chanting and celebrating. And when I came and saw the thousands who have turned out to this event, and when I recall what this event was, what it meant to bear witness to Rastafari, then I know we're not lost. We're not lost. <laughs> Many people, many people are deeply worried, brothers and sisters, deeply worried. They look around and they see the youth going astray. They see youth committing some of the worst possible atrocities. Atrocities that don't, don't even appear to be human. <clears throat> and they wonder what is happening. Some of them begin to run away from the country, to leave the shores. But when I see 
gathering as large and as vibrant as this. And when I see how many young men and women in the audience who are prepared to embrace the faith, who are prepared to stand up visibly and testify as to who they are, then I know that we are not lost. <clears throat> So I'm therefore commending you. I commend Brother Junior Manning and the entire group who have planned and carried out, executed this event. I hail you up and I big you up. And I thank you for the honor which you do me personally in inviting me to this event. Even as you put it, as Brother Junior Manning put it, as a plain clothes Rasta man. <laughs> but what I do know, and I see another plain clothes in the audience, my colleague and, and friend, Dr. Clinton Hutton from the university. There he is standing there. <clears throat> but I know what you mean, and I'm very deeply touched and honored that you should consider me a part of you because this is one great struggle. You testify in your corner. I am in a different corner and I will testify there. One love, one art, one destiny. <laughs>